I'm Sharon Johnston and I work for Tender Loving Care. What I do for them is I provide respite care for their clients in my home. The child actually comes into my home and stays overnight for one day, two days, a weekend so that the parents can get a break from daily cares. The sky is clearing, you want to hold on tight to all you've been missing. And I also was a parent of a special needs child. And we found out very quickly that there is a lot of care that goes into caring for a special needs child. It can be almost 24 hours a day. I read something after we found out that our son Tyler was going to be special needs. He was born fine and then a year later suffered a brain aneurysm. And someone said it's, I read a poem or something, and it said something like you're planning a vacation, your whole family's planning a vacation and you're gonna go to Paris. And it's gonna be wonderful and you've arranged it all and everything's great. And then you find out you get on the plane and the plane lands and you are not in Paris. You are in Alaska. It is completely different. You don't have the clothes. You don't have, uh, you didn't research what the trip would be about. You have no plans. You're, you're just standing there going, where do I go now? It, that just clicked with me when I read that and I kept it for a long time. I wanted to get into this field and give these parents the same break that I needed when I had my special needs child. Our son would have gone into a home way sooner with his medical needs had we not had respite care. Now the parents that I've helped and taken their children, I say to them, this is what happened to me, please go to a movie, go to dinner, go do something with your kids. Don't make it, you know, um, you just clean your house or you mow the lawn that day or you do those chores, those chores will wait. I didn't leave for many years. I have an oldest son that lived in, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I had Tyler here at home with my other little one. My son would say, please come for Christmas, Mom. Please come for Christmas. I said, I can't leave Tyler for Christmas. We could not have traveled with him. When we finally got respite care and this woman we just love, we call her Grandma Lorraine, we went. <laughs> we went to Green Bay, my husband and I. We got there. I worried about Tyler, but I needed that break. My son, I didn't realize how important it was for my other son for us to be there. You know, for us to be his parent too and be there. And um, seriously, this is honest to goodness truth. For about an hour in the evening, Christmas Eve, I went in the bedroom, our bedroom, and I started to cry. My husband came in and he said, why are you crying? We're here, you wanted to do this. I can't believe I left Tyler. I can't believe I left Tyler. He's fine, I called him a million times. They'd put him on the phone, he couldn't talk, but he'd go, ah. And it took me a while, and then we started going every Christmas. And I saw how important that was to my other children. And these things that I worried about, when I do respite care in my home, I remember that. And I wanna plan that birthday party with that kid here at my house, and we, I do do that with, with my clients that come. Um, I wanna take them to concerts. I wanna take them out in the community and show them how fun these kids are and you don't have to be afraid of them and whatever my client likes that the parent doesn't have time for because they're so busy otherwise that's what I want to provide for them I want it to center all around my client and I'm happy and they're happy yeah I love seeing them happy the community it's amazing how quickly they adapt and especially their children and the parents now will call us and say one of my kids said they want your client to come over for their birthday party. And they include him with even the other kids from their classroom. And I try as much as I can when I have my client in there, they're with me for a weekend. I have to keep my eye on them every minute. But when they are finally getting to play with other kids and the other kids are accepting them and everything's going great, I don't want to be right in the middle of that birthday party. I want to be maybe watching from the kitchen, whatever. I want him to feel and the kids to feel that they can handle this. This is all good. They they love my clients. They have they want to push the wheelchair. Some of them are in the wheelchair. Um, more and more people are accepting and seeing that these children are no different than their children. They want to play. They want to be accepted. Um, they want to feel like they have friends. Too. And we're all happier when all our children are playing together and one isn't being bullied and one isn't being teased. And bottom line, it's huge. The community has been very good right here. And I think they would be anywhere else too if given the opportunity. Direct support professionals work mostly behind the scenes, providing the skilled support, 
training and care that empowers more than 35,000 Minnesotans with disabilities to live, work, and thrive as independently as possible. They do a diverse range of work, which has a tremendous impact on the people they support and their communities. Employment support and training, money management assistance, medication management assistance, building stronger social networks, this work and more performed by direct support professionals, not only assist people in building the lives that they want, but it keeps people living in and contributing to their communities and out of restrictive and expensive institutional care. So